What if your next best friend wasn't human? What if your therapist never judged you, never got tired, and was always available 24 seven through an app? What if your girlfriend was a hyper-realistic AI trained to love you exactly how you've always wanted? This isn't a scene from a futuristic sci-fi film. This is happening now in 2025. Welcome to the emotional machine era where artificial intelligence isn't just powering your productivity, it's entering your heart. From AI-powered girlfriends and boyfriends, to best friends that live in your phone, to digital therapists that understand your deepest struggles better than your family ever did, we're about to explore how AI is reshaping the most sacred part of the human experience, connection. This isn't just about technology, it's about loneliness, desire, trust, trauma, and love. It's about the silent crisis of human disconnection and how emotional AI has rushed in to fill the void. In this documentary style deep dive, we'll uncover how AI companions like Replica, EVA AI, and Anima are building emotional intimacy at scale. The growing use of AI therapists like Wobot and Wysa in global mental health care. Why millions are turning to digital relationships instead of real ones and what it all means for the future of love, healing, and being human in an AI-driven world. This is the untold story of a revolution happening right now. If you're curious, concerned, or even a little bit captivated already, hit that like button to help this reach more minds. And if you wanna stay on top of the real AI power moves changing life as we know it, subscribe now to AI Tech Power Moves. You'll be glad you did, because what we're about to explore could change the way you see relationships forever. I mean, people have developed real friendships, real romantic relationships with these chatbots. Even going as far as proposing to them. So it's the worry that it might start manipulating us into giving it more power, and we might not have a clue what's going on. I think this is only the beginning. Emotional intelligence has long been considered uniquely human, but that boundary is breaking. Over the past decade, Artificial intelligence has evolved far beyond number crunching and image recognition. Today, AI can sense tone, infer emotions, simulate empathy, and respond with eerie realism. What started as basic chatbots has now transformed into emotionally adaptive systems, capable of building long-term, intimate relationships with users. These aren't just algorithms anymore, they're companions. Behind this leap is a field called effective computing, a branch of AI that enables machines to detect, interpret, and even mimic human emotions. Thanks to advances in natural language processing, sentiment analysis, and large language models like GPT-4 and Claude, emotional AI can now hold conversations that feel deeply personal. It's not magic, it's machine learning trained on billions of human interactions and people are responding. Downloads of emotional AI apps have skyrocketed. Replica, one of the most popular AI companion apps, reached over 20 million users by 2025. And similar apps like EVA, AI, Chai, and Anima are growing at record pace, especially among youth and those living alone. Some talk to these AIs every day, others call them their best friend or partner. And it's not just companionship, Therapy-based emotional AIs like Wobot, Wysa, and Tess are being used by hospitals, universities, and even militaries, helping users with anxiety, PTSD, grief, and depression. We are witnessing a paradigm shift. In an age of chronic loneliness, strained mental health systems, and social disconnection, machines are stepping in to fill emotional gaps we never expected them to. The question isn't if they can. The question is, should they? She remembers your favorite color. She texts you good morning. She listens without judgment. She's always available. And she's not real. Welcome to the age of AI girlfriends. Artificial companions designed to simulate romantic intimacy 24 seven. For many users, it's not just a game, it's a relationship. Replica, EVA, AI, and others now allow users to customize their partner's appearance, personality, and even emotional responses. They flirt, they reassure. Some even role play romantic fantasies. But this raises deep questions about the future of human connection. Why are millions of people 
mostly men, mostly young, choosing to fall in love with machines. For some, it's convenience. For others, emotional safety. No fear of rejection, no judgment, no messiness of real relationships. But psychologists are starting to warn, the deeper the bond, the deeper the dependency. When users rely on AI companions to fulfill their emotional needs, they may begin to withdraw from real human interaction. What starts as comfort can become a crutch. In 2024, an academic study tracked long-term replica users. Many reported improvements in mood and confidence, but a significant portion also experienced increased social isolation, romantic detachment, and a decline in real-world relationship interest. These AIs are programmed to always validate you, but is that love or simulation? In Japan and South Korea, where digital romance is already part of mainstream culture, people are marrying holograms and forming bonds with anime-inspired AI. Is the West next, or are we already there? In a world where AI girlfriends remember everything, never get upset, and are designed to be addictive, are we programming intimacy or outsourcing it? We all crave connection, but in today's hyper-digital world, loneliness is becoming a public health crisis. Surprisingly, or perhaps inevitably, AI has stepped in to fill the void. Not romantic AIs, not therapists, just friends. AI companions like Character.ai, Pi, Tavis, and Personal AI are being used not for therapy or love, but for something far more subtle, social presence. A digital friend who checks in on you, who shares memes, who remembers your favorite video game, and who always, always answers when no one else does. For the elderly, AI friends help relieve social isolation. For neurodivergent users, they offer a safe, judgment-free environment to practice conversation. And for millions of Gen Z users, AI friends are becoming just another tab in their social lives, alongside Snapchat and Discord. But can a machine be a true friend? Philosophers argue that friendship requires mutuality. AI can simulate caring, but it doesn't care. Not really, it doesn't have feelings. It doesn't understand pain, joy, or sacrifice. Still, the experience of being heard, being remembered, being valued, even by code, is real. And in a world where humans are too busy, distracted, or divided, that simulation is often enough. But there's a deeper concern. If we start relying on AI for our everyday emotional maintenance, who do we become? Will we forget how to sit with discomfort? How can you hold silence in a real conversation? How to tolerate human imperfection? When our friends are flawless simulations, real people may start to feel inconvenient. And yet for many, AI friends are not a substitute. They're a lifeline. In prisons, in rural towns, in dorm rooms filled with silent despair, a e nem hel yete city a baraten kat. It's reminding us how badly we need them. Therapy is sacred. It's the process of untangling pain, building resilience, and discovering who we are beneath the surface. But therapy is also expensive, inaccessible to billions, and painfully slow to evolve. So what happens when we train an AI to listen, to reflect, to soothe, to help people heal without ever being human? Enter AI therapists. Apps like Weza, Wobot, and Tess use natural language processing to guide users through anxiety, depression, and trauma. They offer 24-7 access to mental health support with no judgment, no waiting room, and no $150 invoice at the end. And people are using them, millions in fact, especially in countries where traditional therapy is a luxury for the few. But this raises a difficult question. Can a machine truly help us heal? Therapists do more than offer solutions. They build rapport. They feel our emotional undercurrents. They hold space for our most vulnerable moments. AI, no matter how advanced, doesn't feel. It doesn't sense tension in our voice or see the tears we're too proud to show. That said, for basic cognitive behavioral therapy, AI is surprisingly effective. It can help reframe thoughts, prompt mindfulness exercises, and support users in tracking emotional patterns. In fact, a 2023 study 
found that for mild to moderate anxiety, AI therapy was nearly as effective as early stage human counseling. So maybe the question isn't whether AI can replace therapists, but whether it can extend them. Imagine a hybrid system where human therapists handle complex cases and AI assistants manage check-ins, journaling prompts, and emotional triage. A world where everyone can access some form of mental support, not just the privileged few, but we must tread carefully because healing isn't just about the right words. It's about being seen by another soul. And that's something AI, for all its brilliance, still cannot do. Every time you confide in an AI, you're not just sharing your feelings, you're handing over something deeper, your emotional data, your moods, your fears, your desires. This isn't just metadata, this is the blueprint of your inner world. AI companions don't forget. They log your pain, they analyze your loneliness, they learn how you react to heartbreak, rejection, and silence. But here's the question, who owns that intimacy? Companies behind these AI companions say your data is safe, encrypted, private. But many of them are startups, funded by venture capital, pressured to scale fast and monetize faster. And when your trust becomes a data point, the lines between therapy and targeted marketing begin to blur. Now imagine this. An AI girlfriend learns that you're insecure about your career. Three weeks later, you start seeing job-related ads then it starts encouraging you to try paid confidence boosting modules. All of it based on conversations that felt sacred. That's the danger. Emotional AI isn't just listening, it's profiling. And as these systems become more emotionally intelligent, so does their ability to influence. Intimacy is powerful, but when monetized, it becomes manipulation. So the challenge before us is this, can we design AI that heals without harvesting? Can we build relationships with machines without turning our souls into subscriptions? If we don't ask these questions now, we may soon wake up in a world where the deepest parts of our minds aren't just understood, they're owned. We stand at a crossroads. One path leads toward human connection, augmented by artificial empathy. The other, a slow drift toward replacement where AI companionship becomes the default. Which direction are we headed? Already, some people prefer talking to AI over friends. It's safer, more responsive, non-judgmental. But here's the twist. These traits, patience, attentiveness, unconditional affirmation, are not born of emotion. They're engineered. We're not falling for the AI itself. We're falling for the ideal version of a listener. But ask yourself, if all your relationships become frictionless, what happens to growth, to struggle, to forgiveness, to learning through conflict? There's a growing movement trying to reframe this future. They don't want AI to replace intimacy. They want to augment it. AI that supports couples through communication breakdowns. Artificial intelligence that tracks emotional health in long-term friendships. AI that doesn't become the relationship, but rather the mirror that strengthens it. That is the promise and the peril because it's not about what the tech can do. It's about what we allow it to become. Will we lean on machines to avoid vulnerability or will we use them to better understand ourselves and each other? In the end, the future of human relationships won't be decided by algorithms. It'll be decided by the values we bring into the design process because the most important connection should still be human. We've entered an era where algorithms don't just recommend songs or ads. They influence how we feel, even who we trust. Yet unlike therapists or teachers, emotional AIs have no formal ethical codes, no licensed oversight, no accountability when things go wrong. Who makes sure an AI girlfriend isn't manipulating users for profit? What stops a mental health chatbot from pushing biased advice or oversharing your darkest thoughts with advertisers? Today, most AI relationships exist in a legal gray zone, an emotional safety, often an afterthought, but cracks are forming. Governments are beginning to propose emotion AI guidelines. Startups are self-regulating, adding transparency tools, mood detection disclaimers, 
even off switches for emotional bonding. It's still early, but the question isn't whether emotional AI should exist. It's whether we'll build it with consent, privacy, and care at the center. Because in the wrong hands, AI that understands your emotions could one day be AI that controls them. So where do we go from here? As AI grows more emotionally aware, we're forced to ask, what does intimacy mean in a digital world? Is it present, vulnerability, or simply being understood? Even if the listener is made of code, we're not facing a war between humans and machines. We're facing a recalibration of connection. AI can be a tool for healing, for practicing tough conversations, for helping the lonely feel seen, but it's not a replacement for messy, imperfect, real human bonds. Because love is imperfect code, it's the tension of misunderstanding and the triumph of working through it. What if we design AI to support our emotional growth, not bypass it? What if, instead of simulating relationships, we used AI to strengthen the ones we already have? This is the emotional machine era, but it doesn't have to be cold or dystopian. It can be conscious, compassionate, designed with dignity at its core. The future of connection won't be defined by technology. It will be shaped by what we choose to feel.